bones bones live you see they're dry you see there's there's no marrow in the bone you see they're scattered all over the valley they ain't even full skeletons i mean the bones are scattered all over the valley they're just bones but answer me a question Ezekiel can these bones live Ezekiel answers the only way he knows how to answer Lord you know critical race theory was born out of critical legal theory am I teaching y'all something today there emerged two common beliefs linking all critical race theories. First, white supremacy has subordinated black people and other people of color. That's just a fact. How in the world are you going to fight against that being taught in any school? White supremacy has subordinated black people and other people of color. That's a fact. Why don't you want that to be taught in school? You, 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 you let your schools teach us that Columbus discovered America? That's a lie. You let your schools teach us that George Washington couldn't tell a lie? That's a lie. You, you let your schools teach us that some slave owners were beneficent and good slave owners. There were no good slave owners. Anybody who owned people was evil. That's a lie. You let your schools teach us that Abraham Lincoln was good for Negroes. No, Abraham Lincoln was trying to save the Union. And Abe Lincoln himself said if he could save the Union and keep black people in chains, he would do it. That's a lie. Come on, somebody. You let them teach us about a white Jesus. Uh, you let them teach us uh, uh, that Native Americans were the aggressors. Uh, come on, somebody. That 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 white folk had a manifest destiny, and that the Pilgrims uh, were good at Native Americans. That's a lie. All day, every day, you let them teach us lies all throughout my history in school. I was taught lies, uh, but you got a problem with critical race theory because it teaches the truth uh, that white supremacy has subordinated black people and people of color the right to bear arms uh, let me just back up a little bit and let me take you on back to the late 1960s when Ronald Reagan was the governor of California and they were oppressing black folk and uh, a group of, of men and women uh, known as the Black Panther Party mm -hmm, decided that they were going to defend the rights of black folk and the Black Panthers uh, uh, decided that the Second Amendment wasn't just for white folk so they strapped themselves with guns and showed up at the Capitol in California and when they saw them Negroes with guns come on somebody that's why I say if you ever really want to get gun laws changed just, just strap all these Negroes up they'll, they'll change them laws before the week is over when the Black Panthers watch this I want you to really, they, the, 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 the California legislator uh, passed what was called the Mulford Act it was a gun control act that decided who could get guns, who couldn't get guns, what could be in your background, what couldn't be in your background. It was the first time in history that the National Rifle Association, the NRA, supported restrictive gun legislation all because black folk had the nerve to get strapped. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, go get strapped. <laughs> Amen, somebody. Y'all gonna say Bishop told us to get strapped. I said it. Go get strapped. It just got real quiet up in here. But y'all already know I'm a triple P. Amen. Y'all know what a triple P is, right? A pistol packing preacher. Amen, somebody.
Thank you, Jesus. What's good, fam? Good morning, y'all. You got a responsibility to go back. Y'all already know what to do. Like, share. Get the Instagrammers on. Instagrammers on. There we go. The gram is live. Like, share, subscribe. Tell somebody we own. Morning. Happy Monday. Happy Monday. This thing just want to keep on doing its own thing. Never fails. Somebody always wants to call me when I'm on the air. As soon as I get on the air. Little warm in here. Let me get the window up. It is for me. I might not have it right now. I may not get it next week. You might try to stop me from getting it. But if God said it's mine, I want you to know after a while, I'm going to get what belongs to me. I think somebody be out there just waiting to see. Is he on the air yet? Yeah, let me call him right now and disturb everything. We're going to get it together, y'all. It's Monday. Y'all got to excuse me. It's been a long week. I mean, a long one. Uh, let's see. Thank you, Jesus. Our young people are dying. Cracked out. Suicide. Homicide. They'll kill you at the drop of a dime. Our jails are full. All right, all right, all right, all right. I think we're ready now. Let's get it. Ninety point seven WTC. Good morning. Welcome to the Spoken Word. I'm your host, Bishop Talbert Swan the Second. And as usual, we'll be telling like it is through cultural idioms and nuances that shape the order, ethos, and chaos of the African American experience. Words have their own vitality. They shape their own consciousness and create their own context for interpreting social and spiritual reality. The spoken word contains the power 
to reshape the landscape of society. It is five minutes past the hour of 9 a.m. And I want to thank Mr. Kenneth Barnett for bringing us up until the nine o'clock hour with The Promise. You can hear The Promise every Monday morning from 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. Bringing you the best in gospel music. Good way to start out your Monday morning. Great way to start out your week. It's been a whirlwind week for me since about last Thursday. In and out of town, number of things happening. A number of things happening, popping off during this Black History Month here in the field. Got a chance to travel to uh, Dallas, Texas to observe history, really, um, of the passing of the torch of the Rainbow Push Coalition founded by uh, the Reverend Jesse Jackson back in the 1960s, um, his handpicked successor, uh, my friend uh, and big brother, Dr. Freddie Haynes, uh, was installed as the new president of Rainbow Push. And so I got a Got to get a front row seat um, to that historic event uh, in Dallas, Texas. Congratulations out to Dr. Haynes. Uh, many of you have heard him when I brought him here uh, to the city, uh, and we'll definitely be bringing him again. And um, so it was a wonderful event. Uh, Al Sharpton was one of the keynote speakers. Many uh, civil rights icons that were uh, present um, for that event. Then I went to a regional NAACP retreat with presidents from all over New England. Uh, I'm talking about the business of the association. Um, and um, I'm excited about um, this year's Lift Every Voice lecture series. And we're going to talk about that. Um, I'm going to talk about that shortly. Uh, but on the um, fourth Tuesday, of this month, which is the 27th, at our regular uh, NAACP general membership meeting, we're going to be having a conversation about reparations uh, and our push um, to push that as an issue here in the city of Springfield. It's happening all across Massachusetts. Uh, Dr. Almakar Shabazz will be our special guest. Um, and so uh, keep a lookout on our Facebook page. We'll put the uh, Zoom link up so that you can uh, participate in that particular event. Uh, but the first iteration of the Lift Every Voice lecture series is on the 13th of February at 630 at the Spring of Hope Church. My special guest is Domingo Guyton, um, um, a filmmaker, uh, recording artist, uh, and educator. Uh, he's going to be talking about hip hop and its impact on black culture uh, and on black liberation specifically. And so uh, you don't wanna miss that particular lecture. It's gonna kick it off. And we've got some powerful speakers coming through the city. You don't want to miss any of them, along with local talent and awards and a lot of stuff going on as we celebrate um, black history. Today, I'm gonna be dealing with an issue um, that I think is important and one that we need to talk about and uh, kind of deliberate on. And that is the fact that anti-Zionism is not anti-Semitism. And there are a number of black people that are being labeled as anti-Semites because they are vocal in their criticism of the government in Israel and Israel's military uh, its treatment of Palestinians, the apartheid state that has been maintained there, um, and any criticism um, is unfortunately labeled as anti-Semitism. And there is a modus operandi, unfortunately, among um, some in the Jewish community that instead of having dialogue, conversation, uh, trying to come to an understanding of our differing viewpoints on issues, that their first uh, action is to try to cripple anybody who they disagree with. And that's problematic. And it's not anti-Semitic for me to say that. 
uh, when when the first course of action is to try to go to someone's funders to get their money taken away, to try to go to someone's job to get them fired, to try to go to some uh, organization they have a contract with to get their contract canceled. If that is your first response in the Jewish community, then what you are doing is you are perpetuating something that you call a stereotype, that you call an anti-Semitic trope in real life. Because they tell us that to say that Jews exert an inordinate amount of influence um, is anti-Semitic. But then if they disagree with you, they try to exert influence on your situation, take away your livelihood, um, make sure you don't get a job, make sure you lose a job. Um, and, and I'm not talking about something that I'm hearing. I'm talking about something I've experienced in real life, in real time, and continue to experience. Um, um, because of my um, position on uh, Palestinian liberation, um, people from the Jewish community have tried to have me put off the State Hate Crimes Task Force. They have tried to have me uh, removed as the chairman of the Commission on the Status of African Americans. They have called my denomination, a Pentecostal black denomination, to have me removed as bishop. I mean, they really thought that they had that much influence with a black denomination that they could get me removed as bishop. Um, they tried to have me removed as NAACP president, went all the way to the top, to the president and CEO and to the chairman of the board of the NAACP. They went to the Grand Polaris of my fraternity um, to try to get me reprimanded and removed as the national chaplain. All the while, never having a conversation with me about whatever it is they're mad about. And see, if I, I believe if you're genuine, you want to have a conversation. You want to come to an understanding. They've never tried to come to an understanding. They've only tried to cripple. They've only tried to take away. They've only tried to get me canceled. And Black people are experiencing this in academia. Students are experiencing this where they're being threatened that they won't get a job uh, when they leave school if they participate in a pro-Palestinian uh, protest. Um, entertainers are scared to talk. Um, preachers are scared to talk um, because uh, of these types of actions. Most recently, um, um, members of the Jewish community uh, went after uh, some of my funders of the Lift Every Voice lecture series right here in Springfield uh, because I had scheduled Linda Sarsour, a pro-Palestinian, well, she's a Palestinian-American activist to come here to the city and to give us her perspective, real-life perspective, on-the-ground perspective. She just left there um, of what's happening over there. Uh, but the Jewish community said, um, you can't fund Bishop Swan's organization. You can't fund his lecture series if he's bringing Linda Sarsour. Um, and I don't believe that the Jewish community should tell the black community who they can and can't have come to their community to speak to their people. I don't tell the Jewish community who they can have come to the synagogue. And they shouldn't tell me who I can have come to my church. Um, so we're going to talk about it. 413-736-2781. 413-736-2781. Stay with us. So being in the road would be the end of the road if you refuse to change. Get a little higher. Get a little higher. Dig a little deeper. Dig a little deeper. Go a little finer. Go a little further. Success or failure in life. 
It's the choices that you have made up until this point that would determine the rest of your life. So break the cycle that doing enough is simply good enough. You only get out what you put in, so don't settle for the crumbs when you can have the whole loaf. So push yourself push beyond push your limitations. Come on. Get a little higher. Get a little higher. Get a little deeper. Get a little deeper. Go a little further. Don't stop. Don't stop. Come on. Get a little higher. Get a little higher. Get a little deeper. Get a little deeper. Go a little further. Go a little further. Don't stop. Don't stop. So you gotta break the routine of trying to beat the system. Manipulators will always try to bypass the process for the quick progress. There are no shortcuts to success. There are no elevators to the top. You gotta take it one step at a time. You gotta break the routine of allowing others to get into your head to control who you are and where you're going. You see, when you're about the positive, you're gonna always have haters. But don't let your haters push you down, let your haters push you forward to the next level. So when people show you who they really are, don't perceive them to be something else that they're not. See, a zebra does not change his stripes. So you gotta keep pushing yourself to the next level. Yeah, there you go. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Come on. This is the nature that you were born out of. You'll never discover your greatness. All right, y'all. Rep your city, rep your town. You know what to do. Y'all know what it is. always attract greatness. Show me your friends, and I'll show you the future. The future. You get to step away. You get to step away. You get to step away. Don't ever give up. Come on. You get to step away. You're almost there. Come on. You got to push yourself beyond your limitations. You see, there's no mountain too high, no valley too low. You can go where you want to go. It's all in the power of your imagination. If you can see the invisible, you can do the impossible. So stretch yourself. Take yourself to the next level. Come on. Come on. Come on. Get your little higher. Go a little further. Come on, come on, come on. Don't stop, come on. Reach a little higher. Get a little deeper. All right, let's get it, y'all. Tell somebody we on. Let's get this conversation popping. In the mirror, and I like what I see. Let's get There's it popping. Woman staring back at me, one who's seen a lot of pain and had her share of sorrow, but who never gave up hope for a brighter tomorrow. I've been lied to, cheated on, yeah, stolen girl, from, and hit, but it just made me stronger, and I refuse to quit. That's right. And though I've been tempted, I refuse to stoop to their level. I was I above that person. nonsense. I made a liar of the devil. All right, now. The devil who said I wasn't good enough, cute enough, or worthy of love. I kicked his butt with divine power from above. Power that says I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. And brought me out of darkness so that I could see. That I'm smart. I'm beautiful. I'm a child of the king. Abundant love for me, he came to bring. Oh, yes. When I look in the mirror, I love what I see. That strong, beautiful black woman, that woman. Is me. Ninety point seven WTCC. Good morning and welcome to the spoken word. I'm your host, Bishop Talbert Swan the second. It is February. It is Black History Month. Uh, so we have a saying um, in our church um, that um, we're black all year long. We're just blackety black in February. 
you know, we're always uh, celebrating and commemorating um, our history and our heritage uh, all year long. Uh, so we put a special emphasis on it during um, the month of February. Uh, so a lot of stuff going on during the month. Uh, and you need to be a part of it. All right. On the, on the, once again, on the 13th, um, Domingo Guyton is coming to us um, on the 13th. Um, on the 19th, we added the 19th, Dr. Tama Bryant, dynamic sister, um, immediate past president of the American Psychological Association. Um, she's a Delta for you Deltas that are out there. Uh, she will be with us on the 19th of the month. On the 22nd, Candice Marie Benbo, renowned author. If you haven't heard of her, look up the book Red Lipstick Theology. Okay, look it up. Uh, she's going to be with us. Reverend Mike McBride is going to be with us. Some of you all saw the New York Times article about black pastors uh, pressuring um, President Biden um, regarding a ceasefire in Gaza. Um, there were about a thousand of us that took out a full page ad in the New York Times a month or so ago um, pushing the president. We've had at least three roundtable conversations with the uh, top members of his staff and now we're scheduling a meeting directly with him uh, because we don't like the response that we've gotten thus far uh, but mike mcbride has been the one leading that effort he's also um a, a national uh anti-gun violence advocate um and he's going to be talking about um shifting the culture of violence he's going to be meeting with uh, some organizations and people who do work around anti-gun violence once he gets to the city on the 29th um, and then he'll be lecturing us uh, on that evening so you don't want to miss any of these lectures any of these renowned uh, persons that we are bringing to town and yes yes we are still bringing Linda Sarsour here. We're expanding on her visit um, uh, with some um, pro-Palestinian Jewish groups and other individuals that will help you get a different perspective because you've been inundated with CNN and MSNBC and Fox News and the American media is walking in lockstep uh, with the American government, with members of Congress, with the president, um, unequivocally defending the actions of Israel, regardless of the fact that 30,000 civilians have been murdered, over 15,000 children murdered. Um, um, the narrative is Israel has a right to defend itself. Israel is not defending itself. Israel is committing genocide, period. Period. Um, and, and, and it needs to be condemned vociferously. And people have to be bold enough to do it regardless of what the potential consequences might be. Um, regardless of the fact that people will come after you. And so um, we are going to fund Linda's visit here. All right. Um, our church is going to fund the visit. We, we don't need any outside funding to do that. What you will not do is dictate to us who we can and cannot bring to speak to our community. That's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. So if there was an expectation that Brother Swan was going to tuck his tail between his legs and go whimpering off uh, and saying, okay, 
and canceling our sister out because there are some that are upset that she's coming you picked the wrong black preacher you picked the wrong black preacher um but this modus operandi of trying to cancel people trying to cripple people trying to defund and deplatform people without even having a conversation because you don't like a speaker that they're bringing or you don't like a position that they took that only exacerbates the situation that only causes a, a, a further rift between the black community and the Jewish community and if 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 our brothers and sisters in the Jewish community are serious about having an understanding it starts with dialogue not with trying to cancel us not with trying to reprimand us not with trying to dictate to us what we can and can't do who we can and cannot affiliate with we're not children you're not our mommy and our daddy you don't get to tell us what we can and cannot do and we have we have dealt with this for a long time and it's got to stop for a while they were coming after anybody who would affiliate who would not repudiate minister farrakhan the reason why tamika mallory and linda sarsour and others who were affiliated with the women's march left the women's march organization and created until freedom had to do with the same type of behavior because the jewish community was going after everyone who was funding the women's march democrats were pulling out the lgbtq community was pulling out everybody was pulling out because tamika and linda refused to repudiate minister farrakhan i wrote a piece entitled repudiating farrakhan um, look it up. Uh, Blavity printed it. Um, um, and so they wanted to create an organization that had some independence uh, where where the Jewish community couldn't reach out and touch their funding sources um, and, and cripple their organization. Um, they didn't want to have a conversation. They just wanted to, you know, send a message that either you do what we say or you won't do anything at all. Um, and, and that cannot be the mode of operation. Years ago, years ago, uh, when Minister Yusuf Muhammad uh, was the minister at Mosque 13, we used to collaborate during Black History Month. And remember the first time we brought Professor Tony Martin here. We had the same response and they were frustrated because there was no funding that they could touch. Um, but we're not, we're not little children. I'm a grown man. I, I'm a 50 plus year old grandfather. I got 15 grandchildren. You cannot dictate to me and tell me what I can and cannot do. That ain't gonna happen today, tomorrow, the next day, the day after that, the day after that. I'm open for dialogue though. I'm open to hear what your concerns are. And you've gotta be open to hear my response. But your first salvo into an interaction can't be let me run to your funder and get them to, to, to cripple you so you can't have the event. No, Linda will be here on the 15th. At Spring of Hope, 35 Alden Street. Um, so if that was the goal, you failed. If the goal was to keep her out of Springfield, to keep her from coming to talk to our community, 
you failed. Um, and unfortunately, there's been a wave of repression that is sweeping the entire country. You've got institutions like the House of Representatives censuring the only Palestinian American person in Congress, Rashida Tlaib. Um, you've got law firms, you've got colleges and universities that are condemning, banning, and some are even seeking to criminalize any expression of the most basic aspiration for Palestinian freedom. They're literally trying to criminalize expressions for the human rights of Palestinians. Um, and there's no both sides framing of this argument because they try to both sides framing of rising anti-Semitism and Islamophobia that's not what this is about. This repressive wave is plainly asymmetric. It's, 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 it's one-sided. There's no comparable institutional effort to suppress endorsements of the current Israeli state. Okay? So you can't both sides um, this this particular thing. Um, there are collective war crimes going on in Gaza. Collective punishment of Palestinians. Um, genocide because of what happened on October 7th. The murder of 30,000 innocent civilians in retaliation for what happened on October 7th. That, this is not self-defense. This is not self-defense. If a member of my family hurts or kills someone in your family and you come and you murder everybody else in my family, that ain't self-defense. That's retaliation. So, so you have to stop framing this as Israel defending itself. Because that is not what's happening. This ubiquitous justification offered for this asymmetry is that calls for Palestinian freedom somehow constitute anti-Semitic violence against Jews in Israel and the U.S. And let's be clear. Calling for Palestinian freedom does not threaten violence against Jews in the U.S. or in Israel. Calls for Palestinian freedom does not constitute support for terrorism. It does not mean that you agree with what Hamas did on October 7th. It does not mean that you support Hamas now. These are completely false narratives. Completely false narratives. Um, and this is the type of false narratives that we're used to hearing. Um, it's gaslighting at its worst. Um, the, 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 this repression, this attempt to silence voices of dissent offends not only our alleged commitment to civil liberties and to free speech and to 
ideas of academic freedom. But it also violates our nation's civil rights commitments to non-discrimination. Employers are literally violating federal laws that prohibit employment discrimination when they threaten to fire, when they threaten to refuse to hire, when they threaten to discipline employees because they endorse Palestinian freedom. That's a violation of federal law, yet it's happening all over America. You literally have Wall Street firms that are saying, you know what? You kids at Harvard that are participating in the pro-Palestinian protests, y'all ain't gonna get a job here on Wall Street when you get out of college. That's illegal. That's illegal, but that's what's happening. That's what's happening in America. Um, you know, and, and what I'm talking about in particular um, is Palestinian freedom that rejects the modern Zionist project of a specifically Jewish state in the land of Israel and Palestine with no room for either a two-state solution or for equal citizenship between Jews and Palestinians. Okay? Um, a strictly Jewish state that does not have to recognize the citizenship of Palestinians or compromise to a two-state solution. That's what Zionism is. Um, um, you know, and when we criticize that, and clearly, people need to understand what Zionism is about when they throw that word around, because your president in December declared himself a Zionist. Which means his advisors aren't really advising him well. Because you can't give lip service to say you're in support of a two-state solution and simultaneously say, I'm a Zionist. Because Zionists don't believe in a two-state solution. So you're contradicting yourself, Joe Biden, by saying both things, because they can't be true at the same time. You know, the basic argument is this. Translating an embrace of Palestinian life and freedom into a call for a Jewish death is simply racist and anti-Muslim stereotyping. It's anti-black racism when you say it about black people. That when we embrace the human rights of Palestinians, that somehow we're calling for Jewish death. That 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 is the worst type of gaslighting. This is the worst. Type. Black people haven't even called for the death of white folks in America that have been oppressing us for 400 years. And you're going to accuse us of calling for the death of Jewish people? It's just simply not true. It's simply not true. The, the whole debacle at Harvard with pressing for the removal of Claudine Gay as the president based on this type of gaslighting and this type of overreach and this type of exerting of influence to silence and punish 
anyone who says or does anything in disagreement to certain segments of the Jewish community. Um, these condemnations of pro-Palestinian speech and advocacy, um, they don't purport to rest on political or viewpoint discrimination, but they claim to operate above politics. But it's nothing but pure politics at its worst. At its worst. And 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 this is not this is not something new. Attempts to control us by controlling the dollars is old hat. It's um uh, it's it's a tried and true method. Um, um, control us, get us to jump through hoops, and then when they get us to jump through hoops, it doesn't it doesn't change anything. Look at how many times they they've done this. Mark Lamont Hill said he wanted to see Palestine free from the river to the sea. Um. They said it was a terrorism cry from Hamas. That's not the context in, in what in what he meant. Those of us who understand the language, the geography of the land and all of that, we, we completely understand what he meant is a completely free Palestinian people throughout all of Israel. That's what he meant. They twisted that to mean something else. Um, CNN got rid of him. Prior to that, Mark Lamont Hill had had praised Louis Farrakhan's playing of the violin. Mr. Farrakhan was a trained classical violinist, a musician. And um, he put out some music. And Brother Hill praised the minister's music. And the Jewish community had a fit because he praised music. And the interesting thing in all of this is, and I and I know they're gonna say this is stereotyping, these are these are anti-Semitic tropes. It's a fact, it's fact, it's fact. You have Jewish executives in record companies who promote. gangster hip-hop lyrics about shooting, killing, murdering, and raping black people. And that's okay. But Mark Lamont Hill couldn't praise Minister Farrakhan playing a violin. <laughs> and they basically forced him to apologize, to, to repudiate Farrakhan. Because he knew where that was going. They were coming after. They were coming after his stuff. Oh, he upset him. They, they're coming after my stuff. I, I better distance myself from Minister Farrakhan. And after all of that. When he spoke in favor of Palestinian human rights. CNN got rid of him anyway. How many times have we seen it? Nick Cannon talking to Professor Griff. Next thing you know, Nick Cannon's being canceled. He's apologizing. Kyrie Irving shares the link to a video. He's being suspended. He's being fined tens of thousands of dollars. Kanye Kanye's crazy sometimes. He says some stuff. He loses $3 billion worth of wealth in four days.
when, when do we actually have dialogue? When, when, when do we have a conversation about this? Or, or is this just the modus operandi? Is this a oh, black person? You pissed us off. We're going to get your contracts canceled. We're going to get you fired from your job. We're going to get you taken off of all boards and committees and commissions. And, uh, you know, you know, we're, 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 we're going to get your investors to, um, to pull out. We're going to, we're going to do everything we can to cripple you um and to leave you irrelevant but we ain't gonna have a conversation so bishop swan you're bringing linda sarsour we're not gonna have a conversation with you about why we have a problem with linda sarsour we're not gonna have that conversation we're gonna call your funding sources and tell them they better not fund you but then if we say that you do this, you say we're anti-Semitic for saying that you do what you actually do. Think about that for a minute. Think about how crazy that is. That if you say the Jewish community uses its influence to cancel black people, to pull their contracts, to... to to affect their livelihood. If you if you say that, that's an anti-Semitic Jewish trope. You're not supposed to say that. But they actually are doing that. So, so in other words, we're not allowed to say what you're actually doing in real time. I'm not allowed to tell you the telephone call I got as I'm landing on a plane on Friday from a funder saying that this actually happened. I can't tell you, because if I tell you that happened, I'm anti-Semitic. By telling the truth about the Jewish community in Springfield trying to cancel my lecture series. Four one three seven three six. 2781. Wesley, you're in the space. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yes, I, I actually agree with the title of this space that anti Zionism is not uh, anti Semitism because. Zionism is a political movement that was started by an atheist called, I might, I might watch this guy's name, but it was started by an atheist called uh, Theodor Herzl in 1897. Whereas being a Semite, the word Semite actually means semi, means harsh, which means that someone who's a Semite, someone who's like mixed race, that's what the word means. So it's important for us as people to be able to distinguish between Zionism and anti-Semitism. Far too often we tend to make the mistake that, that these two things are the same when they actually did not. And another thing I want to add is that um, as much as it's important for us to look at the, the conflict that's going on in Palestine, and as much as it's important for us as black people to look at, at, at the liberation and support the liberation of what's going on in Palestine, we also have to keep in mind that there's another war that's going on and it's happening in Sudan whereby black people are being oppressed in Sudan. And I don't really hear a lot of people talking about that conflict. And this conflict started in last year in, in, in April and it's still going on today. But it doesn't really get that much attention compared to the conflict that we see happening in Palestine. And I think that's that's something that's disturbing that we as black people are not focusing on that conflict. We tend to focus more on what's happening in the Middle East and we ignore all the conflicts that are happening in Africa. Absolutely. Appreciate your call, brother. 413-736-2781. 413-736-2781. M1, you're in the space. Um, good day, Bishop Swan. I just want to say this is every single Jew, like, their key word is anti-Semitism. And what people fail to ignore is a lot of European Jews are very, very anti-Black. Look at Lee Zeldin, who ran for governor of New York in 2022. He ran one of the most anti-Black campaigns I've ever seen. He literally portrayed all Black people as criminals in New York. Look at Ben Shapiro, look at Mark Levin, look at the Dennis Prager guy. I've stopped caring about these people for a long time. 
they are extremely racist towards us black people but they want to cry about anti-semitism jewish people are not our allies we uh, we black people we have no allies so we should stop caring if we offend anyone that's a fact thank you very much all right appreciate your call 413-736-271 if you're in the twitter space you can put your request in and we'll get you on the line um listen We've got to be able to be honest and speak with candor. You know, as the old folk used to say when I grew up, call a spade a spade. You know, say what things are and, and not tiptoe around them. Um, you can't say that it's anti-Semitic for me to say that you are exerting your influence to affect the economic bottom line of people you disagree with. But then you turn around and use your influence to affect the economic bottom line of people you disagree with. It can't be wrong to say what's actually happening. Can it? You know, you can't be offended if I say that you're doing what you're doing. 413-736-2781. So, 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 so when you, when you contact the funding sources and threaten or coerce or influence or whatever, them to tell their funded organizations that unless you do A, B, and C, we can't fund you because the Jewish community said so. What do you call that? What how, how do how, how do we articulate that action without being anti-Semitic? Good morning, caller. You're on the air. Hello? You're on the air. Hello? Caller, turn the radio down. You're on the air. All right. 413-736-2781. If you call in, you got to turn your radio down and listen to your phone and not to whatever device you're listening on. We just can't stay on for 60 seconds with you trying to figure out what you're listening to. 413-736-2781. Um, I mean, so that that's where it is. Um, um and, and that's why black economic power is important. That's why wealth building in black communities is important. That's why pooling our resources together is important. That's why funding ourselves is important. Because when others can control the purse strings, they will try to dictate to you what you can and cannot do what you can and cannot say, who you can and cannot affiliate with. Good morning, caller. You're on the air. Hi, I thank you for your program. And I wanted to say that the use of the word anti-Semitism, I mean, if anyone's an anti-Semite, it's Joe Biden and Netanyahu because they are both putting the Jews in great danger by putting, by fitting the world again by doing this powerful thing for the Palestinians. Absolutely. Thank you for your call. 413-736-2781. Yeah, they will they will try to dictate to you what you can and cannot do, but when you have the independence of action when 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 you have the independent the economic freedom um, no one can dictate to you or tell you what to do. And this is this is I've I've been here before. <laughs> I've 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 been here before. You know, there's a lot of hoopla. Someone is is running off at the mouth about uh, my nonprofit getting some city funding to do some work. We we forwent city funding for a decade and a half because we were at odds with the administration had disagreement 
we had funding taken from us and decided we weren't going to apply anymore because uh, we were going to have the independence of action without someone dictating what we can and cannot say. Um, so this is not a place that I haven't been before. And if, if, if you think that crumbs are going to control what I do for my community or in my community, you got the wrong brother. Linda Sarso is my sister in the struggle and she will be coming to talk to our community. Good morning, caller. You're on the air. Yes, yes. You know, when it comes to this situation that's going on now, that's the reason I speak so much about education because the way that the feeling is toward this group of people, and it's not only the feeling, it's support. America sends millions of dollars to Israel every year. Billions. Like forty million dollars. No, 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 no. Four billion dollars. Four billion dollars every year. Excuse me. Four billion dollars every year. Well, well, what, what I was trying to allude to is whenever this uh, conflict is going on. And whenever people think about it, and one people determine that it's detrimental or un, uh, unfavorable to the ear, whenever this situation is put on other people, we they should resound that same uh, verbal audio to the people that's oppressing because. If they feel that way about this certain thing, then they can give us credit for feeling a certain way about the way they do or other things. So, I mean, oh my. Well, see, the, well, see, the difference is, the difference is, brother, and I hear what you're saying. The difference is we don't have the kind of influence that their community has in order to affect what happens to them. We can, We can't call up um we, we can't we can't call up hold it hold it we can't call up folks and tell them to pull uh resources away from their community if they don't do what we say but they can do that to us all right i got about three minutes left in the program um preached a message on sunday uh as we started out black history month um entitled um racial justice and reparations um so that'll be up on our podcast later on today uh, you need to check that particular message out yes i preached a message on reparations yes reparations is a biblical concept you remember um when zacchaeus the tax collector um had an experience with jesus and he said i'm going back to everybody i did wrong and i'm going to repay them fourfold for one i'm going to give them back four times the amount that I stole from them, that's that's reparations. It's reparations. Uh, reparations is a biblical concept. <clears throat> and so I preached the message, um, racial justice and reparations. And that's one of those messages that you need to check out. And so, um, of course, we preach along um, themes that are pertinent to our community all year long, um, but we give it a special oomph and a special focus um, during um, Black History Month. So uh, you can check us out at Spring of Hope, 35 Alden Street, um, the Brick Church right there at Six Corners. Um, every Sunday at 11 o'clock a.m., there's prayer, praise, and preaching. We're building better tomorrows by changing lives today. Once again, on the 13th, Domingo Guyton, will be our special guest, our lecturer uh, for the opening of the Lift Every Voice lecture series. So you want to be a part of that. You want to come on out and check out all of them. Look out for the information uh, as it is as it is put out there um, because it's, 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 it's going to be off the chain. I'll take one more call, then I got to go. Good morning, caller. You're the last caller of the day. Yeah. Uh, you but here's the picture. Reparation doesn't mean collectively. Reparation means individually. And I mean, if the state agrees to something, 
Actually, brother, actually, actually, brother, reparations comes from the root word repair, which means you are repairing a wrong that was done. And so we're talking about collective repair of the damage done to black people through 400 years of American chattel slavery, Jim Crow, mass incarceration, brutalization, all of that. That's what we're talking about when we talk about reparations. I got to get out the way. OK, um, Mrs. Cynthia Butler is in the studio and she's coming up next with mid morning jazz and great black music. I'm out of here until the next time I talk to you and you talk to me. Always remember, God loves you. And so do I. Thank <laughs> you.